So tonight I thought I would do a little video demonstration of how I fold my letters. It's not to say this is the only way to fold the letter, but it's the way that I fold it based on period examples that I have seen. So what I do is I start by folding the paper about one inch up, up on either side. And by the way, on this paper, I've trimmed an inch off of the length. So it's one inch narrower than a standard 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. That way, it looks a little less anachronistic. You don't have to have one of these bone folders, but I do, and I enjoy it. So, I use it to my advantage when I can. So then, I come up from the bottom, about like that, and then before I crease it, I go ahead and fold it again to see where it will hit, and I don't like how far that is, so I'll go up a little bit farther and try that out for size, and that's a little too much. So I need to try to hit somewhere in the middle, which is about here, and that looks about right to me. So I'll go ahead and crease it here with my finger, and then I'll go ahead and crease it here. Now at this point in my letter, I always write something along this edge here, and a little something here. I've seen an original from... Um, Francis Marion that he wrote his name here and an extra scribble or two, a last note. I'll even sometimes write extra things in here in the spirit of using up all the paper. So at this point I'll go and write that and I'll be right back. Okay, so now that I've written a little more along the sides, I'll go back now and fold it. So you're folding it into thirds, basically. One, two, and three. And I generally try to leave about an inch and a half to two inches at the top. Maybe that's a little, a little uh, too short. But what I do now is I go ahead and I take this finger and I pinch to kind of curve the, the paper like so. Then... I'll tuck this portion into this flap here, just like so. And then I'll do the same, which is always tricky, down here on the other side, like that. And then I'll kind of stuff it all in together and try to find where it evens out as far as getting it even from the top here. Sometimes it's a little bit easier than others. But you kind of have to work it all out and crease it as you go. I don't really commit to it until I'm done at this point. Then when I'm pleased with it I'll go ahead and crease it a little stronger. So looks like that time I didn't get it quite even. No worries. A lot of the originals weren't either. So at this point, I'll go and I'll crease it with my bone folder, like so. And sometimes this um, annoys me, the little flap that it leaves right here. Sometimes you can kind of tuck it in a little bit tidier, like that, before you go to the final tuck. And sometimes you can't. So this creates a nice little packet, and it does not require the use of an envelope. So that's how I fold my letters. It's a little bit off, but at least it is stuck together.
Okay, so after I have added the direction for the letter and the last, I added the last post it would be delivered to, which in this case is Fort Detroit. I've added some extra features along the way for interest. I put my seal and the bishop mark with June the 30th, which will be the date that it should be received at Fort Detroit. Looking forward, right? So this letter is ready to put in the saddlebags of the post rider. So I hope you've enjoyed this. If you like this video and others like it, please subscribe and like the video and leave comments or questions below. Uh, I'm doing little short videos because uh, I think that it's more interesting to be able to search for exactly what you're looking for. And maybe one day I'll make a compilation of all these put together. So this one is going to Detroit in the country of Michigan. So this is a shout out to Eileen Alix. If you're watching Miss Eileen, I hope you enjoy your letter. And I thank you for being interested in 18th century penmanship and writing. So thank you for watching.